Well, welcome to the October 2023 Reby Homes Team Monthly Real Estate Market Update. Well, let's start with three topics getting a lot of headlines these days. First, there's a surge in foreclosures. Headlines that foreclosures are increasing, well, it's accurate. They are up compared to foreclosures from two years ago during the pandemic years when there was a freeze on foreclosures. And that's the key point to put things into perspective. This chart shows foreclosures are still well below any non-unicorn years going all the way back to 2003. Now, every market has foreclosures and yes, the percentage increase compared to years with virtually no foreclosures, well, they make sensational headlines. However, the data itself does not support a foreclosure crisis. The second is Airbnb's impending doom. There's a rumor that Airbnb's downfall will crash the housing market. Certain cities, they are definitely regulating short-term rentals. New York City has tightened regulations leading to a significant drop in short-term rental listings. This past June, there were 22,500 short term rental listings in New York City for Airbnbs and VRBOs. And that number fell to 4,600 after the law was passed. That means there's about 17,000 people that were renting their house out as a short term rental that they no longer can. Now, does that automatically mean that they will sell or will they switch to longer term rentals? Phoenix, on the other hand, has more lenient state laws. In 2016, the state of Arizona passed a law that prohibits all of its cities and towns from restricting short-term rentals. However, homeowners associations, they may be able to restrict short-term rentals for their specific community, and many do. So at the start of 2023, Phoenix had over 20,000 short-term rental units, and all the competition has led to some of them sitting empty for weeks at a time. Now, is that enough to destabilize the housing market? Well, specific markets have different impacts, and only time, of course, will tell. And the third topic is that Wall Street is buying every home. There's a belief that Wall Street is buying up all the available homes, squeezing out first-time home buyers. However, the data shows a bit of a different story. Most investment properties are bought by individual investors or mom and pop owners who have between one and nine properties. Institutional investors, they play a role, but they don't dominate the market. Interestingly, recent trends indicate that many individual landlords, well, they may be considering selling their properties influenced by the boom in apartment construction and increasing options for renters. As always, there are shifts and trends in the real estate market, and it's helpful to understand enough context to avoid jumping to conclusions based on either isolated or flawed data. So let's jump to mortgage rates and how that affects potential sellers. Anyone that has a mortgage interest rate below 3%, between 3 and 4%, if they were thinking about selling, it's highly unlikely that they will sell now. If they have something in the four or five, they might think about it carefully. Five, six, and seven, if they have a good reason to sell, they're probably going to sell. They won't let mortgage interest rates stand in their way. Now there is an interesting exception. About one in four US homeowners, or 26, percent say high mortgage rates would not impact their decision on when to sell their home. Of those 26 percent, 43 percent of them, or four out of ten of them, say that they don't need a mortgage to buy another house. Well, this chart for annual appreciation, it sheds some light on that. The national average is 57.3% in five years. That means if someone had a $400,000 home five years ago, that house is now worth $600,000. So they have that extra $200,000 in equity and whatever they paid off over that five years of their mortgage. Going back 30 years to 1991, we can see from the national averages, prices went up almost 300%. So people that bought 30 years ago, they're sitting on a tremendous amount of equity. Those are the ones that are saying mortgage rates don't matter to me, I can go ahead and buy because I have enough equity and can buy with cash. How much equity do they have? Well, 38.7% of Americans today own their house free and clear. 30% have more than 50% equity, meaning if they own a $400,000 house, they have at least $200,000 in equity. And moving on to home prices, this from the Wall Street Journal, home prices are not falling anymore. The surprisingly quick recovery suggests that the residential real estate downturn is turning out to be shorter and shallower than many housing economists expected. 
And this from John Burns Consulting. January through August, housing demand stabilized, resulting in relatively stable home prices. By August 2023, national resale home prices fully recovered from the declines experienced in the second half of 2022 and now exceed the April 2022 peak. And according to Freddie Mac, overall, it appears the reduction in supply has outweighed the decrease in demand. Those housing prices have started to increase even as sales have fallen. And finally, Finally, a look at the Case Shiller, FHFA, and CoreLogic report showing at the beginning of last year, prices had very high appreciation. Then the expected correction occurred in the months of July through December, those red bars that show when prices decreased. And then after that, appreciation returns much closer to historical norms. And here's another three indexes from Zillow, Black Knight, and Freddie Mac showing the same thing, the same trend. And now a look at our local market here in the Phoenix metro area. Active listings are up 12% from last month, but still down 33% year over year. Although the balance of supply and demand still favors sellers, demand has weakened even more due to increasing interest rates, and supply has increased 22% over the last 10 weeks alone. As a result, negotiation power has swung in the favor of buyers. It's worth noting that historically, there tends to be a decrease in new listings towards the end of the year, so we'll see how supply fares over the next eight weeks. Average price per square foot is up 1.1% from last month and 3.1% year over year. For the first half of October, we're at 302.75, but the month is not over, so we're going to ignore that number in the meantime and we'll see where it lands next month. This 3% increase over the past 12 months was hardly expected, especially considering the weak market conditions this time last year, which only highlights the market's inherent unpredictability when looking beyond a short-term horizon. The best thing this data can be used for is an insight into the market's direction over the next eight weeks. While the outlook may not be very optimistic, keep in mind we felt the same way in October 2022. Shifting the focus to the dynamics of buyer-favored negotiations, last month saw 45% of all closings involve seller concessions, with an average amount of $8,500. In times of heightened interest rates and stressed market conditions, opportunities and strategies emerge for buyers, which tend to dissipate when the market stabilizes. So buyers, now is a great time to take advantage of that. On the seller side, the market is showing signs of weakening as we enter the fourth quarter, primarily due to increasing mortgage rates. The greater Phoenix area still remains in a seller's market, but if the current rate of decline continues, it may transition to more of a balanced market by the end of the year. Prices are holding steady and are not anticipated to significantly decline at the moment. However, sellers should be prepared for longer marketing periods, improving the condition of their home prior to listing if necessary, and remain open to funding rate buy-downs. September finished with 22% of all listings closing above list price, which is up from January of this year, however, far below the 50 to 55% range in 2021 and the first half of 2022. The average amount above list price for homes under $800,000 was $5,000, but it's worth noting that many of these homes offered seller concessions in return for that higher price. So buyers, don't let those numbers fool you. There's still plenty of opportunity out there, and $5,000 above ask to get $20,000 in concessions could be very worth your while. And that'll wrap up our October 2023 real estate market update. We'll be keeping a close eye on the data in the coming weeks as the market is finally starting to see some changes. But until then, if you have any questions or would like specific data in your area, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to help. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next month. 